Supply chain operations have become a major challenge since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Factory shutdowns, mobility restrictions, and widespread lockdowns have disrupted logistic networks, raised the shipping costs, and extended delivery times for everyone in the global economy. Assessing the intensity of these issues has posed its own challenge, as conventional measures tend to focus on specific elements of the global supply chain rather than as one interconnected whole. And that's where the New York Fed's Global Supply Chain Pressure Index, or GSCPI, comes in. Unlike other approaches that examine the global supply chain, the GSCPI draws on key information from over two dozen commonly used metrics to calculate one headline number. This includes the Baltic Dry Index, the Harpex Container Ship Rate Index, the BLS Inbound and Outbound Air Freight Price Indices, as well as PMI data on delivery times, backlogs, and purchase stocks. Published on a monthly basis, this all-in-one bird's-eye view of potential disruptions compiles data from the global transportation cost and regional manufacturing service across seven economies to show supply chain pressures both historically, dating back from 1997, and in the current moment. The GSCPI is not a predictive or forecasting measure. Rather, it is intended to help policymakers, analysts, manufacturers, and consumers to get a better sense of how the evolution of certain pressures can lead to different outcomes in terms of export and imports, such as scarcity and costs for goods and products. In addition to the global headline number, the GSCPI also produces regional indicators useful for analyzing trade, inflation, and trends in globalization across the United States, China, Japan, the Euro area, South Korea, Taiwan, and the United Kingdom. The GSCPI is an official research product of the New York Fed and will publish at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on the fourth business day of every month.